Okay, we are ready. So, um, because of this update to Excel, that seriously was like 2.11, we need to enable the legacy data import wizards so that we can get things to work the way our textbook would like. So on your file menu, choose it to show the backstage window. And we want to look at our Excel options on the options page, choose data. And down here at the bottom, we have these options to use the legacy or old import wizards. Let's do that. I'm going to check them all. Got them all checked. And I'm going to click OK. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go to my data ribbon. And I'm going to use this get data button with the drop down. And I know yours might look a little different. We want to find legacy wizards. We can't use the from file up above, but under our legacy wizards, we can use from text. Now, that looks more like what they were telling us we should expect, huh? And perfect. We don't need to change anything on this first screen. I'm going to click Next. Now, Excel doesn't really see where the different pieces of data are. So we're going to check comma because that's how our data is delimited. That's the comma comes in between each of those columns. I'm going to uncheck tab. Shouldn't really have any impact. I'm going to click Next. And we're ready. I'm going to go ahead. It looks like there was one other thing we wanted to do. I don't see it. I think we're good. Next, next, finish. Here we are. Now, where do we want to put this data? Well, we know we've been for a while wanting to put it in cell A4. So that would be good. But I would like to overwrite this stuff that's already here. So let's click on the properties button. And we should be able to find this radio button that says overwrite existing cells with new data. Okay. Click OK. And then we're ready to import. Yay! <sighs> Crowd goes wild. We got some data. That was a big deal for us because everything has changed on us. All right, so let me find my textbook and see where we should go from there. Now, when we're working with um, text, we can use some different functions that they show you in table. 7-1. So if we looked at our function builder, we would see text somewhere in here. Let's see it. Hmm. It must just be one that we have to type in. That's super fun. So we can use a bunch of different options that they show us in the textbook. So let's use some of them. First of all, in cell B12, some of our descriptions are not starting at the beginning of our column. So we're going to do some trimming. So let's type equal trim B4. So we're going to set this column equal to the data in column B4 without those leading spaces. So we can see how that works. Now we'd like to drag our fill handle down through B18. 
see all of our data without those leading spaces. They say don't deselect. Keep your data selected because we're going to use that here in a minute. Now we're going to copy the, this data in B12 through B18 and paste these trim values back to our original cells. If we paste the contents of the clipboard using control V, we would retain the trim function. We don't want that. We only want the trimmed values. So we're going to use some special paste options. So I'm going to select my data and press control C to copy. Now I want to right click in B4 to display the shortcut menu and I want to paste values only. There they are. And then we can delete this data down here. We don't need it anymore. That just shows us a neat way that we can do um, things like that if we need to revise our data all at once without um, having that formula retained forever. Now let's check each of those cells and make sure that we got only the data and not the actual formula. All right. Now the next thing that we want to import is some data from an access database. Since we've got our legacy wizards working here, hopefully this one will go smooth. If not, that means you might not have it access installed. So let's check. We want to sec select cell A11 and we're going to choose get data looking at our legacy wizards from access. Now I'm going to go find my downloaded files. And there's our access database. This is the access icon. So if you're not seeing that, that's a hint that access may not be installed. I'm going to click open to start that wizard. Now looking at this, they say we want to choose a table. We want to go into our existing worksheet at the location that we have. And that should be all. We can click OK. So there's our Excel data. Now they say what happened to the layout of the worksheet when Excel imported the data. Fixed it up for us, didn't it? Let's format it. Um, they want us to right click cell A11 and choose table and then choose convert to range. And we are okay with that. We want to convert it. Now we want to right click the row heading for row 11 to display shortcut menu and click delete to delete this row. Ah. I want all over the row. So I had to select more. Now let's select range A10 through F10. And click the Format Painter button. 
and then drag through the range A11 through F17. And then we just copy that formatting. I'm going to undo. Okay, so I want to delete row 11. And then I think I want the format painter from these rows. So I'm going to select them, use format painter. And now select our access rows. There we go to get them formatted in the same way. One more time, let's just select one whole row, format painter, and then select all these. There, now we got commons and everything. Okay, the next thing that we need to import is some web data. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click in A18 to get started with that. Web pages, if you are aware, use a file format called HTML, which is hypertext markup language. We can use what's called a web query to select data from the internet from an HTML file and add it to our worksheet. So let's import some data from a web page and let's see if we can do this. We've got cell A18 selected. We want to click our data ribbon, get data, and I'm going to use the legacy wizard to use from web. And then in the address bar, they want us to type the path location of our data file. And it could be quite long. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's it's Microsoft Internet Explorer, right? Okay, so let's go find our data file. Open File Explorer and go to the location where you have your data files saved. So the one that I'm going to want is um, this salesdata.htm. Now what we can do is click on this file and choose properties. We can copy our location here. I'm going to select it. You can right click and choose copy. And then I'm going to come over to my web query and press Control V to paste. Now I'm not done, y'all. I've got to do one more backslash. And the backslash is the slash that's right above the Enter key. And I'm going to go back to File Explorer and copy this file name. And I'm going to click here and control V to paste it. I keep saying yes. I'm hoping. All right. I'm going to click go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. We got our data. So look at the file name is, is kind of interesting the way it's changed it. So my file was saved in my external hard drive, which is my F drive, in my documents folder, in my CIS 201 folder, in my Excel chapter 7 project folder, and then the long file name. 
So again, what I did is I found our file in File Explorer, and I looked at the Properties screen for it, and I copied the full path, added a backslash, and then copied the file name and pasted it after the backslash. When I clicked go then, it was able to read that web data file. Okay, so now we have our information there the way we want it. And they do have a question. Could you navigate to the file using the file explorer and just double click on it? No, you couldn't because it would just open it in a, a web browser. So we have to be within Excel and go through this pro process. Let's click the data selection arrow button. This one. I think I've selected the table. And then we can import. Import. It's like it's selecting it, but it won't. That's the whole thing. That's the table we want. Hmm. Ah, well, look at your options, and click OK, and then when you click again, it will actually select your table, and then you can import. Now, once we've got our import data box, which is what we want, uh, we're going to say that this is going to go into our existing worksheet in A18. Let's click on Properties. On Adjust Column Width, we don't want that to happen. So let's uncheck it and then click OK. And if we were ready, to import our web data. Now we've got some headings, so let's delete those. And we want to use the Format Painter again. So A17 through F17, Home, Format Painter, apply to all those rows. Now, the reason you would want to use a web query instead of just copying and pasting from a web page, you're going to be able to keep all the web page formatting. And if you just copy and paste, you won't have a link to the web page for the future, which you will with this import. OK, the last thing that we're going to import, I think, is Word data. So a Word document, you know, a lot of times people will save stuff in a table in Word, and we're going to use that to import. So we're going to open Word.
and open our file. So I'm going to go to my save location. Choose my Word document. I'm going to copy, select my data. And it doesn't look like it's in the right format for us. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to copy this. And in our cell where we want to paste, let's right click and look at our paste options. Now, under paste special, oops, let me cancel here because they said to go to A34. That's where I want to do the paste special. I was in the wrong place. And right now we have several options available to us. So they want us to convert that as text and click OK. And then we have our data. And I'll be right back.